Kia ora fellow travellers, welcome back to Budgeting Borders. Today we're talking about FIFO and this is part two of the FIFO videos. So if you haven't seen part one, click here, go watch the first part and then come back to this one. Without further ado, let's get back into the video. talked about what happens when you first arrive on site you go see your room you get a tour of the village you go see all the different amenities and different things there's on site and then you might get taken to the kitchen but yeah so if you're working in the kitchen you'll be shown where the kitchen is and you'll be you know you'll have a, a tour of the actual kitchen itself uh, the head chef will introduce himself and he'll show you around and he'll tell you what you'll be doing and he'll show you how to do it if you're not familiar with how to do it if you're doing mine site cleaning you'll be taken to the mine site itself by somebody and they'll show you around the mine site and they'll tell you you know what you're supposed to be doing on on the actual mine site uh, depending on what shift you're going to be working usually when you first arrive if you're on day shift so you might land and arrive on site at nine o'clock in the morning for example and you might have one hour to unpack your things get yourself ready and then you'll be jumping into work at 10 o'clock and then you'll do your you know your normal 12 hour shift or however long the shift is uh, if you're working night shift when you first arrive you have that day to you usually arrive in the morning and then you'll have that day to sleep and then you'll start that night on your night shift so life on site can change depending on where you're working who you're working with what sort of site you're on obviously it depends on all sorts of different factors and it's really good if you're on a smaller site you get to meet lots of people and you get to become more friendly with people if you're on a bigger site you'll make lots of friends with the people that you're working with for example, on the small site that I'm working with at the moment, you know, if I go hang out at the bar, you meet almost everybody that's on site. You get to know everybody's names and it, it feels very friendly and almost like a family sometimes, which is really good. Uh, you've got to be careful on sites because most of them are in the desert. There is a lot of wildlife, other potential dangers that you've got to look out for. Uh, for example, snakes are, they can be a big problem on some sites. So you've got to be very careful when you're walking around, especially at nighttime. Try and stick to the paths that are provided. If you're walking around at night and you're not using the paths and you're sort of cutting between the rooms uh, walking through the dirt there is that potential that it could be a snake it could be a scorpion it could be anything so just make sure you're being careful keeping an eye out for wildlife you will find that there is an absolute buttload of flies that is the thing that i hate most about working on mine sites is the amount of flies that are there and you just can't get away from them you're walking from your room to the kitchen to have some dinner and you'll just have like 10 flies like trying to land on you you're constantly walking around trying to swat them away it's horrible you can get uh, special like insect nets that you can put over your hat so you have you know obviously a normal hat you have like a net that covers your face so that the flies can't get to your face but still it's just it's mildly infuriating when you're just walking around covered in flies you also find that it's a lot of frogs and you might be surprised to find a frog in your bathroom or a couple of frogs in your bathroom on the site that i'm working at the moment is regularly a, a frog that i think he just lives in my shower so it's kind of weird just showering with a frog every day he's just sitting there on the wall staring at me while i have a shower uh, the harmless they're not you know the little, little tiny frog like that very cute if you don't like frogs you can put them outside i don't really mind him he just sort of sits there and doesn't do much he probably eats the flies so i'm, I'm happy to have him around uh, there's also things like feral cats uh, they can be a bit nasty try not to try not to feed them or go near them they might look friendly like a normal house cat but they will attack they can be very aggressive almost every site has a rule like don't feed the cats because they just keep coming back and uh, they can cause a bit of a problem you can occasionally also get like wild dogs like dingoes coming around they can obviously be dodgy but they don't usually come too close to site they usually stay uh, on the outside of the fence they don't usually get into the actual camp uh, you can also get things like cows wandering by or even goats and like wild horses there's just all sorts of, of wildlife that is uh, hanging out in the desert that you'll come into contact with there's also other dangers such as cyclones depending on where you're working a lot of the northwest around the Pilbara area in Australia if you're working on a mine site there they have a, a cyclone season which is just starting this time of year right about now it usually ne never really causes too many actual dangerous situations all the sites are set up with uh, special precautions for it so all the all the rooms and all the houses and all the the kitchens and things like that they're all bolted to the ground they're all secured tightly 
because when a cyclone season does hit, there is very strong winds, there is an absolute bucket load of rain that just pours down constantly. So a lot of the sites do get flooded, uh, not usually to dangerous levels, but you know, you're going to get muck everywhere, there's going to be dirt all through the, through the kitchen and through the bar, and it's a real pain to clean it up. Um, just got to be careful, they listen for the alerts. Every site has like a siren system, they let you know like if it's going to be a really dangerous cyclone, you'll all get locked down in your rooms. The only people that are allowed to leave their rooms are the security officers who are going around and making sure people are in their rooms. Usually they'll have someone coming around and delivering food, so if you're working in the kitchen, you'll still have to work. You'll obviously have to be careful walking from your room to the kitchen. Uh, but you'll be the one in charge of feeding the people that are trapped in their rooms. So that can be a little bit scary, but if it is too dangerous to be outside, then they won't let you go outside. Like They are going to look after you first and foremost. So keep that in mind. You know, you've got to be aware of these dangers. It is potential. It does make it sound like working on a mine site is really dangerous and scary. It's really not. Like it, they tell you all the stuff to try and scare you to make sure that you're going to be okay with it in case the worst does happen. But in my experience, I've walked into a couple of snakes and never had any problems. You know, scorpions never really had any actual moments where I felt unsafe on site. But it's just being aware of it so that you can make sure you know what's going on. Now, the last thing I want to talk about today is the money. Obviously, this is budget borders. We've got to talk about the pay. So I'll start with utility roles because that's what I've had the most experience with. It's going to change on if you're full time or as a casual worker. In general, with every job in Australia, if you're a casual worker, you're going to be making more money. Uh, that's just because as a full-time worker, you get annual leave pay and you get sick pay, whereas a casual worker, you don't get those. But as a casual worker, starting out with no experience, you're going to be getting between $26 and $29 an hour for a day shift. I can't really give you an exact number, but you'll be getting some sort of overtime pay for doing more than eight hours a day and you'll also be getting an overtime rate for weekends and for night shifts so usually on a night shift i get paid between sort of 29 and sort of 32 dollars an hour depending on the company and depending on all sorts of different factors but yeah you're looking at about 31 dollars for a night shift and about 28 dollars for a day shift in general you'll be getting a lot of overtime because you'll be working between two and four hours of overtime every single day and most swings, like if you're doing a two-in-one swing, your first week will be a day shift week, and then your second week will be a night shift week. So you'll be making, obviously, a lot more money on the night shifts. That's just, you get paid more for night shifts. If you get really lucky, you might be able to get a two-week swing where you work night shifts the whole time, and you're going to be making quite a bit of money for that swing. Now, if you're working a full-time FIFA utility job, you're probably getting about between 24 and 26 dollars for a day shift and between 28 and 30 dollars for a night shift and again you'll be getting penalty rates for weekends night shifts and overtime that's pretty much all for the utility roles i know if you're working as a truck driver you can get between sort of 40 and 45 dollars an hour as like a flat rate for day shifts i'm not sure about night shifts and overtime for those jobs again with i think it's called a Offsider, a driller's offsider, you get about $29 and about $33 an hour, depending on your level of experience and which company you're working for. A driller offsider is basically a construction laborer on a mine site. It's just what they call it. You do all the heavy lifting, you it's one of the hardest jobs to do. But that's sort of like the next step up basically from FIFA utility. A lot of people go to drillers offsiders and then they try and get onto like the dump truck driving or whatever else they want to be doing. So that's the basic pay rates for the sort of the three jobs that I know about. I'm currently working as a utility worker. I'm trying to get my truck driving license, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to try and jump straight onto the dump trucks because I want to get that good $44, $45 an hour money. Now, because you're working and living on site for two weeks, you're not going to be spending basically any money the whole time you're there. You get free accommodation, you get free food. It's basically an open buffet. You can eat as much as you want. If you're working as a kitchen hand, like I usually do, I'm in the kitchen all day long. I can sort of eat as I work. I, I can you know, have my own lunch break in the kitchen and make whatever I want for myself. But if you're working as a housekeeper or a bartender, or if you're actual an actual miner or a truck driver, whatever it may be, usually you'll come in at the start of your shift. For, you know, if you're on a day shift, you'll come in in the morning and you'll have your breakfast. And then they've also got what we call crib, 
which is basically a long open fridge with all sorts of different foods in it. So they'll have chicken, they'll have ham, they'll have a few different other sorts of meats, you'll have lots of salad options, and you can sort of make your own salads, you can make your own sandwiches. They'll also have pre-made salads, so you can sort of take your own pre-made salads, you know, rice salads sometimes, couscous salads, all sorts of amazing options. They'll also have you know, yogurt, they'll have some fruits, you'll be able to, you, they'll usually have what we call a wet dish, so it might be like a curry and some rice, or there'll be it's just, uh, there's so many different options, like I'm not going to list them all, but yeah, there's just an absolute buffet of food, you can take whatever you want, you put it in a, a takeaway container, and then you take that to work with you, and that's what you take for your lunch, and you'll have that when you have your lunch break, and then you obviously you'll come back for dinner, uh, when you're on night shift, you'll come in for dinner service, you'll have your dinner, and then you can make yourself your takeaway lunch for your night shift. And then you'll be able to come back in for breakfast service once you've finished your shift and then you can go to bed the only other things that you're going to spend money on when you're on site is if you go to the bar and you want to buy alcohol or if you go to the shop and you want to buy chocolates or bag of chips pack of cigarettes maybe you've run out of toothpaste and you need to buy some more the little shop that they have on every site will sell that sort of stuff so that's the only real thing you're going to spend money on when you're up there obviously if you've got a, an apartment back in the city you're going to have to pay for your rent while you're away still you're going to have to pay for all your phone bills and that sort of stuff but because you're not having to pay for any food while you're up there for two weeks you're saving quite a bit of money and obviously if you're not living in your apartment for two weeks that's two weeks where you're not paying for almost any electricity what you can do what i did for a while was i was living in a hostel while i was working fifo so i'd obviously fly away for my two week swing i wouldn't pay any accommodation expenses for my whole two weeks so i don't have to pay any rent at all and then obviously when i fly back into town I just rent out the hostel for one week and I was even able to leave all of my stuff at the hostel. They had a luggage storage room that I could put all my things in, keep them safe. So that worked out really well. I managed to save an absolute buttload of money just from not having to pay for rent and food for two weeks at a time. And it was a really good way to get that savings going. Well that's all I've got for you today guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a comment below if you've got any questions, let me know if this video helped you, don't forget to like and subscribe for the next budgeting board video that's coming your way.